So I've once again found myself with a bit of a hole on my upload schedule, and in casting around for things that I could use to plug that hole, I thought about some of the features that have been added to Game Maker's debug overlay over the last course of the last year or so. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, about a year ago, Game Maker's debug overlay got an overhaul. Uh, you have probably seen something that looks like this as a bit of a frame time graph to tell you um, how your game is performing, among other things. Um, this is just uh, what you now get if you use show debug overlay in Game Maker. You used to just get a, a little bit of text at the top of the screen with a bar with some dancing colors, which honestly wasn't that interesting. Uh, but now we've got a bunch of things like an audio graph, so you can have a look at all the different sounds that are playing in your game. You can look at a uh, view of your um, all the textures in your game, texture pages, um, and you can uh, see how those are doing. Uh, one of the things that is now included in Game Maker's new fancy debug overlay is a console. And this is, um, this is a couple of things. Firstly, it's a mirror of what you might see down here in the Game Maker IDE uh, when you run your game. Uh, at least as of, like, after the game starts, it won't contain the asset compiler printouts that uh, you also find in the console. Uh, you might also notice that there is a box in this console uh, that you can type words into. Like this. And um, you can insert commands into the uh, into the Game Maker console, and you can use this as a um, basically a built-in system for console commands uh, in your game. Uh, you've no doubt seen things like this in other games. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of PC games, in one way or another, uh, over the years have had uh, debug consoles available to the player if you want to mess around and do various shenanigans with uh, like developer tools and whatnot, but. That's neither here nor there. So, the way that this works, uh, the rules for how this works are actually pretty simple and fairly, like, you really don't have to do any complicated setup to make, um, to be able to do things, to do interesting things with the console. So, for starters, uh, any Game Maker function which you type in to the console, uh, for example, if I want to stop the sound that's playing, what is it? Audio, stop, all, I never remember if it's like audio, like, audio, whatever the name of the function is. Anyway, audio, stop, all. So when you call a game maker function in GML, you would want parentheses following the function name. Uh, that is not the case when you call console commands. Um, to, uh, to call console commands in game maker, you, you just type the name of the command, of the, of the built-in game maker function rather, and it will call it. Uh, if you want to uh, call a function which has, which has arguments, uh, what would be a good one? room go to and in this project here I've got room one which is mostly what you see in these in these um, example projects and room two which I don't think I've thought about since like two years ago. Um, if you wanted to call a function with arguments you would type for example room go to and then a space room two instead of using parentheses. Um, let's see uh, as a general rule like numbers that's a number uh, numbers that you will type into a console command as a parameter will be interpreted as numbers. Um, asset names that you will type into a uh, into a console command, uh, for example, room two will automatically be interpreted as, and the uh, and the sound started playing again, uh, will be automatically interpreted as the uh, the corresponding asset in your game maker project. I'm going to type audio stop sound again. Um, you might notice that if you uh, if you hit up and down in the console. We've got a history buffer, so you can, uh, for example, scroll up and down to repeat uh, things that you've typed in previously, or if you've made a typo and you want to uh, quickly uh, scroll to the last command so that you can correct the typo. For example, this is what you might, um, this is something that might happen if you like spell the name of the room wrong and you want to start that again. You can stop the audio because that's distracting me. Um, Back on the subject of types, pretty much anything that won't get interpreted as something else uh, will be interpreted as a string, as you see here. So room on its own, the name of that on its own isn't a number, obviously it's not the name of any asset in the project. Uh, so it'll just be interpreted as a, as a string. If you wanted to, uh, for example, call the type of command, you could, um, uh, you could, um, boy, what am I thinking? You could see the type of any, like, input that you might put into the console. Uh, room two is gonna be a reference type because that points to an asset. Uh, if you put this in quotes instead, 
Oh really? I thought it, I thought you could force it to a string if you um, if you put quotes around it. I I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. I'll have to check. Hey. Right, where were we? So those are probably the types that you care uh, about most of the time. Uh, you might notice that uh, we are seeing some return values when you type in a function name as a command and um in the console. Uh, you will you can't really do anything with this return type. Uh, you can't like save this to a variable or anything like that. Um, this isn't like a full-on scripting uh, language or a full-on um, like interactive shell or redevelop print loop or anything like that. Uh, but you can see the return type. Uh, this can, I suppose, sometimes be of use if um, like you uh, you type in a function that can return like some value or undefined and you want to see what that value is. Uh, you can, of course, call like math functions, uh, like square root of, I don't know, 10. We'll print out 3.16. Uh, which is this which is the square root of 10 again that's not something that's really useful because you can't save that to a variable or anything um, you can and I don't think I have any setup in this project but you can uh, print out the value of global variables will it work for like um, the score health and what was it lives like default built-in variables that all right, well, I guess you can print out the value of those uh, global, global variables, at least. I wasn't even sure if score health and lives were still, like, part of the runtime, uh, because it's been so long since anybody ever has tried to use them. Anyway, let's see. What else can you do here? So the real fun begins uh, in that you can um, you can not only call built-in game maker functions, uh, but you can also, and I'm going to create myself a new script. Let's call this SCR, like, console fun. Uh, you can also uh, call functions that you have defined yourself in, in the game. So the uh, in this example here, the number of hearts that I'm drawing at, at the top of the screen are just basically looping over the player's HP value. Uh, so if I wanted to, if I wanted to uh, write a little function uh, which would increase the player's HP value, uh, we can take that a little further. Let's give that a default value of 1. Uh, we could call a function like this from the console um, if we wanted to do something a little more elaborate. Uh, let's spawn some stuff. And then, I don't know, let's repeat a hundred times instance create. Uh, we could call a function like this. And we could um, spawn a bunch of grass objects in the game. Uh, if I were to run this again, uh, we can have a little bit of fun with calling uh, these functions. So let's bring up the console. Um, let's say add health. Uh, first, let's just call that with the, with the default argument of one. So we've got four hearts at the top instead of three now. Um, if I return to this and say add health like five, uh, we now have we now have nine hearts at the top. Uh, what was the other one? Spawn some stuff. Um, this is a bit of a silly example, but potentially useful if you wanted to like. I don't know, execute like a stress test on your game and see how much grass you can spawn before bad things start to happen. Uh, in which case, it might be also be useful to actually uh, show the um, show the frame time graph here. So let's, uh, let's spawn some more stuff, shall we? And we can, uh, we can keep spawning some stuff. Got a lot of stuff on the screen now. And we can see how that's affecting the game's frame time graph. All right, that's pretty fun. Let's see. So what else do I want to do with the console? I want to close that because it's distracting me. Um, you might notice that as I um, as I type stuff in here, uh, you will um, like the game will still like behave. So I can walk around uh, when I'm when I'm typing into the console. I can like cast spells and interact with things and, and whatnot, which is um, usually not what you really want. Now I've just got some WASD keyboard mash on the console and it doesn't really know what to do with that. Um, let's see, there is a set of functions you can use. Um, which you can use to detect if uh, you are currently typing things into the console. Um, by the way, in addition to saying show debug overlay, uh, we also have show debug log, uh, which you can use to uh, to immediately open the like the debug overlay to the uh, to the console instead of to the to the FPS frame graph, uh, frame time graph. Uh, that can be nice to have. Anyway, let's see. Uh, what are the names of the functions off the top of my head? I think uh, keyboard is, or is it debug is? 
All right, uh, code completion helps. So is debug overlay open? We have is debug, oh, come on. I was just looking at the name. Uh, is keyboard use debug overlay, which is a bit of a mouthful, and is mouse uh, over debug overlay. And you can use some combination of these three functions to figure out like if you want to just ignore like ignore player input or something like that. So for example, in my case, it would make sense, I think, um, to uh, let's use the is keybug used debug overlay function. And I can say if the player is like not in the middle of the casting animation and not uh, is keyboard used in the debug overlay, then we can ignore input. So if I were to run this now, uh, if I'm not, if I, if I like don't have this text box activated, I can walk around, I can do things, I can talk to NPCs, I can, um, I can cast spells, that's pretty fun. But if I were to start typing something into um, the, uh, the debug, uh, the debug console, then input is going to be ignored by the player because uh, this is a, this will trip the is keyboard use debug overlay function and it will cause the game to ignore input to the player. So I think that's about it for the um, for the debug console. You can use this. You can definitely use this to um, to make testing certain parts of your game a lot easier. Uh, the only reason that I have not really been making much use of the debug console in Game Maker is because honestly I forgot it was there until like two weeks ago. And now that I remember it's there, uh, I'm almost certainly going to um, be using it more than I have been. And I highly recommend that you would use it yourself if uh, you find yourself needing to debug things like this. Uh, one thing I would like to address, because this tends to come up whenever it comes to like reading input from the player like this, uh, this is not something that you can use for mod support. This is a debugging tool. Uh, like I said earlier, this is not a scripting language. This is not a shell. This is not a read eval print loop or anything like that. You can't use this to execute game maker code. You can't use this to like load game maker code from files or anything like that. Um, by the way, something else I, uh, I would mention, uh, for example, when it came to using like uh, math functions or whatever, uh, this will not parse expressions for better or for worse. So if you were to type something like the square root of five plus five, uh, we're gonna see the square root of five. We're not gonna see like the square root of 10. Um, even if you were to like wrap that in parentheses or something like that, that's gonna actually not work because um, Game Maker now thinks that's supposed to be like a string or something like that. It might be worth a feature request to make this at least some kind of rudimentary math expression parser. I wouldn't hold my breath over something like that being added, but uh, just know that like you can't like, I don't know, show debug message obj player.x or anything like that. Uh, this will not evaluate the expression. Uh, this will just evaluate obj underscore player dot x as a string and print that instead. Definitely still an immensely useful feature, but uh, just be aware of what the limits are. So, I think that was fun. I hope you found this interesting. I hope this is something that uh, you all find useful. I'm curious how many people knew this was here. Uh, I remember when it was added, but then I didn't think about it again for months and months and months. And then I just, I think I found it by accident again, uh, like two weeks ago when I was trying to like look for something else in the debug overlay. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker. I usually post videos on like 3D stuff or shader stuff. So if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out the Steam page for Wizardux, which is the game that I like to make when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Links to that can be found down in the description as well. I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to help out, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description.